please join me in the call to worship. Come, let us join in, all together with each other. Let us build a community of worship. God be with us as we worship together. Join me with the opening prayer. As we gather for worship today, we look around and pay attention to where we are. We smile. Smiling at those who worship with us, or as we think of friends who are gathering in other places. We recall we that you, our God, are, are with us, us when we worship, worship in, in ones and twos, twos in, in groups and crowds, crowds in our homes, inside, inside church, church buildings, buildings, and outside in your creation. We pause in our weekly doings to gather together and with you. Be with, with us, us, we pray. Amen. Amen. And sing as you're able, blessed assurance. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of His Spirit. In his blood, this is my story. This is my song, raising my savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Yeah. 
Please join me in the prayer of confession. Loving God, we recognize the times and the ways we put distance between ourselves and you, between ourselves and others. We recognize the times and ways we build walls that separate us from each other and you. Forgive us and remove those unnatural barriers. Amen. And now the assurance of pardon. Remember, God promises steadfast love and reconciliation. God is not far away, but close. God loves and forgives us. May we hear those words with our hearts and with our minds. Would you pray with me? God, I thank you for this table, place where we all gather as one, united by you. We thank you for these scriptures. We thank you for your word this morning. We ask that you would just bless and anoint it. In Jesus' name, amen. Our first scripture this morning is Psalm 24. Psalm of David. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and those who live in it, for he has founded it on the seas and established it on the rivers. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord and who shall stand in his holy place? Those who have clean hands and pure hearts, who do not lift up their souls to what is false and do not swear deceitfully. They will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from the God of their salvation. Such is the company of those who seek him, who seek the face of God, the God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates. And be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. And then this passage from the book of Luke, the 14th chapter. 
I'm going to read you from verses 15 through 24. This is a this is a parable that Jesus told while he was a guest for dinner at um, at a religious leader's house, a Pharisee's house. Here's the parable. One of the dinner guests on hearing this said to him, blessed is anyone who will eat bread in the kingdom of God. And then Jesus said to him, someone gave a great dinner and invited many. At the time for the dinner, he said to slave to say to those who had been invited, come for everything is ready now. But they all alike began to make excuses. The first said to him, I bought a piece of land and I must go out and see it. Please accept my regrets. Another said, I bought five yoke of oxen and I'm going to try them out. Please accept my regrets. Another said, I've just been married and therefore I cannot come. So the slave returned and reported this to his master. And the owner of the house became angry and said to his slave, go out at once into the streets and lanes of the town and bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. And the slave said, sir, what you have ordered has been done, and there is still room. Then the master said to the slaves, go out into the roads and lanes and compel people to come in so that my house may be filled. For I tell you, none of those who were invited will taste my dinner. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So we have the uh, we have the privilege of of attending an iconic historic church. We're going to be celebrating our 200th anniversary, and I, I think it was four years, maybe five years, somewhere in the near future, 200 years as a church. That's historic. And there are lots of things about our church that are um, noteworthy. But I wonder, what's the most important thing? What's the most important piece of our of our church, of our structure, is it is it these uh, these red doors? You know, everybody people know us that we're the church with the big red doors. Might maybe it's those rainbow doors. We a lot of uh, a lot of folks talk about the rainbow doors. Maybe it's the the fact that we are historic and that we have the Lincoln's pew. Maybe the Lincoln's pew is the is the, the focal point, the center point of, of our church. Maybe it's our organ. Beautiful organ, a beautiful instrument crafted just for our church. Maybe that's maybe that's the most important thing in our in our church. What oh well we can't forget about the windows, right? The Tiffany windows. Are those the things that are the most important piece of the church? Or maybe it's uh, maybe it's the pulpit. Maybe it's the the words that are spoken there at the at the pulpit. <laughs> Any pastor would love to say that. Yeah, I, I I think that's the most important place, right? Because I can I get to talk and you get to listen and I get to share my wisdom with you. But I'm going to tell you that while all of those things are, are in some cases beautiful, are important or valuable to us as a church, they pale in comparison to the one piece of furniture that in my opinion is the most important thing in our church. And that piece of furniture is what we call the table. This is our table, this is in our sanctuary. Looks kind of plain, got some carvings on it and stuff, but for the most part, it looks pretty plain. You look at it up close, and it looks like it's kind of had a hard life. Some some little pieces broken off here and there, some scratches and some scrapes. It's very much a well-used table. 
Now, I'll tell you this. I grew up in, in a United Methodist Church. We have some, some of our traditions are different. We call this the altar table. And uh, Presbyterians and other Reformed churches, um, we call it a table because the belief is that um, the altar is a place of sacrifice and that Jesus, as far as the Reformed folks are concerned, Jesus died once for all. And they don't, they choose not to recreate that on an altar, but instead focus on the the supper the dinner the food the fellowship the all that was shared all that was enabled by that one one time sacrifice of Jesus on the cross and we do serve communion elements there where we do remember the the sacrifice and the cross but um but this is a table and it's a table to come and sit and actually did you know we have there's three of them in our church in our um and they all have very humble, humble uses within our church. Um, the one that says, in remembrance of me, I, I believe that came from another church, from Fifth, um, Fifth Presbyterian, I think. Um, sitting humbly in the background next to our recyclable garbage can. The, the, uh, the other table sits in the narthex, and you'll find a lot of our ushers sitting at that table. All just very humble, simple pieces of furniture, but they are, in my opinion, the most important, the most important pieces of furniture that we have. Why? Why would a simple table be so important? And the answer is this, this table represents the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is so often referred to as a party, as a banquet, as a place where we all get to gather. And we celebrate. We celebrate God. We celebrate one another. We celebrate communion together once a month. But we are all invited to gather around this, this very special table. Why is it special? Because it's God's table. I'm going to say that again. It is special because it is God's table. And at God's table, and you've heard, you've heard Susan say this over and over again when we received communion, God's table is for everyone. There is a place at the table for everyone born. The song we just heard. There is a place for you at this table. There's a place for me at this table. There's room for everyone at this table. So why is that so important? I think we try to, um, you know, table banquets and tables and parties and things like that. If you read through scripture, you see them over and over and over again. There are always these banquets happening and, and these things occurring. You know, Jesus was constantly eating at someone's house and sitting and reclining at a table and enjoying the, the food together, having conversation together, being together. But to sit at a table back in, in Jesus's time, there was a lot to it. It was a lot more than just coming to dinner. It was a way that uh, you show hospitality. It's a way that you honor these guests. It's, and, and there was often a hierarchy, you know, who got to sit next to the host, who sat on the left, who sat on the right, and who was actually invited and who was not invited. And Jesus was often criticized because he would sit at the table with anybody. And that scandalized some of the Pharisees and the Sadducees and some of the, the elites who would never dream of sitting at the table with, with some common people. 
And yet Jesus would sit with, with prostitutes, with sick people, the sick, the poor, the blind, the sinners. He was accused of being a party, a partier, a wine giver, because he came to the table and he sat with anyone and everyone that wanted to come to that table. This table is important because we as the church, we as the body of Christ, have to find room for everyone at God's table. But we don't do that very well. It seems like lately there are many, many tables that are not God's table, but it's it's my table. And I'll choose who gets to sit at my table. And we build barriers and we we withhold invitations to others and say, no, you can't come and sit at my table. This is God's table. You put it back up. You've looked at me long enough. Let's look at a table. There you go. These simple, humble pieces of furniture are dedicated as God's table. And all are welcome. This is not a white table or a brown or black table. This is not a rich table. And it's not a poor table. Rich and poor. White and people of color are invited to sit together at the table. There's no place cards on this table. All are welcome. Straight or gay, Christian or Jew, American or Chinese or Russian. God's table where all are welcome. This is more important than ever as we find ourselves more and more divided, more and more at odds. And we're seeing it starting to seep into the church and in our relationships with, with one another. And I think it's crucial that we remember that we are all invited guests at God's table. We don't choose the guest list. We don't sit where we where we are in a hierarchical kind of a, of a position. We're invited to come to God's table. And friends, I know that can be hard because what if God wants to seat me next to somebody I don't like or I don't agree with? That's where this party turns into a lesson in hospitality. When we sit at God's table, we receive God's hospitality and we share that hospitality with those around us. When we sit at God's table, we see beyond the surface and see the heart. We see people who are beloved of God, people of all different races, all different orientations, gender identities, beliefs. If you're a polity nerd Calvinist sitting with Wesleyans, can you imagine such a thing? We sit, we are hospitable together because we're all invited guests of God. We sit and we learn to love one another. We sit and we care for one another, seeking out what is it 
what what are the needs that you have how can how can i bless you how can i bring you peace these are the kinds of things that happen at god's table and at god's table we can be fearless because we know that there are those who reject god's table that parable that Jesus told about the people that were invited to the party and said, no, I've, I'm busy. I've got other things to do. I've got to go test drive my oxen or whatever that thing was, that um, excuse that was given. There are people who don't want God's table to exist. They want to create their own tables and they want to sit at their own parties and they want to associate only with themselves or people like themselves. And sometimes people sitting at, at one table will, will want to go to war with those sitting at another table. God is calling us to sit at his table, at God's table, where there is love and respect and hospitality. And like I said, fearlessness. I'm th thinking of uh, the 23rd Psalm. And that says that, um, yea, though I walk in the, um, thou preparest a table. Where did I put my paper? Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. That was my, there it is. Sorry. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. You prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. Friends, when the world is looking like a very difficult place to be, where walls are built up and barriers are, are established. When people want to sit and, and yell at each other rather than talk together. That brings fear and anxiety into our hearts and into our minds. God is calling us to the table. Come to this table to sit together under the Lord's protection in the presence of those who might oppose us and embrace God's love, God's strength, and God's peace and hopes and hope that those who are counted among enemies or those who might oppose us would one day join us at this table Because that's, that's part of the message of that parable was there's room, there's space, there's place for everybody. Fill it. Let's fill it with everyone. From the city streets to the country roads to the marginalized, everyone. Folks, those of us who've accepted that invitation, who've, who are sitting at God's table, we get to enjoy the banquet, but I also believe God is asking us to keep inviting folks to come and to join us at the table. People that we like, people that we don't like, people that agree with us, people that don't agree with us. And let us share God's hospitality around that table together. And I think we need to do that now more than ever. So I invite you, as we hear this next song, to, to consider where you're at. Has God sent you an invitation to the table and, and you're too busy to, to accept that invitation? Are you at the table enjoying God's presence, God's blessings? I hope you are. But the table is set. The table is ready. Come, come to the table that God has prepared. We all 
I'll start on the outside, the outside looking in, and this is where grace begins. We were hungry and we were thirsty, with nothing left to give, all the shape that we were in. Just when all hope seemed lost Love opened the door for us He said, come to the table Come join the sinners who have been redeemed And take your place beside the Savior Come to the table Come meet this motley crew of misfits These liars and these thieves There's no one unwelcome here Oh, all that sin and shame you brought with you it at the door and let mercy draw you near. Come to the table, come join the sinners who have been redeemed and take your place beside the Savior. Sit down and be set free. Come. All who failed, you've been forgiven All who dream, all who suffer All who loved and lost another All the chained and all the free All who follow love the part where he talks about those misfits that all gather around the table it makes me think of of jesus and the disciples the ones that he called to to be around him but i also makes me think of the way that i lovingly describe our church and that i mean it as a compliment when i say we are just an eclectic bunch of weirdos who found our found one another found a way to love one another and to work together and and just to be a church family together and I'm thrilled to be a part of this body. One of the things that we do as a body is we share our, our ties, our offerings, our gifts, our joys. And the ways to give are on your screen. 
And now we thank God for the gifts that God has given us. I invite you to join me in the prayer of thanksgiving. Accept our gifts today, we pray. By offering our time, concerns, and resources, we seek to participate in your work of care and compassion. Amen. Amen. And now, God, we come to you, and we pray the way that you taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. One of the great joys of being together, of gathering around this table, is it is a banquet table. It is, it is a party. It is a place of joy that goes beyond all of our understanding, but it's a place of joy. Let us go out with our heads up, our eyes on, on Christ, and let us go out with joy. You shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills will break forth before you. There'll be shouts of joy and all the trees of the field will clap, will clap their hands. And all the trees of the field will clap their hands. The trees of the field will clap their hands. The trees of the field will I did warn you in advance that it was kind of cheesy. But. So we send you out. This is a picture that uh, Susan shared last week, too. But I mean, this is if you don't think Presbyterians can dance and express joy, folks, it does happen. This was our group at, at the General Assembly last week doing the electric slide during one of our breaks. And the, the person in the red is our what our co-moderator for the next two years leading the way as we dance together. So, and now may you dance with the joy in the presence of God, and may you know that you are God's beloved, sealed in the spirit, claimed as God's own, so that you may serve God and your neighbor. Amen. 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 We'll let Nicole take us out.